know, it's a purple ironweed, blue aster, yellow leaf fall day, perfect for a bike ride on the Greenbrier River Trail. I'm just going to take a look at the weather and see if this Indian summer sunshine is going to last. Wait for the computer to boot up, burping and grinding at seductive white noise, lining up sweet cyber nothings to whisper in my ear. Oh, Google has an interactive logo today. It's a blindfolded letter G aiming a stick at a pinata star, cheered on by a bouncy little O, L, and big G. And by pressing the space bar, I can try to hit the star and get a cartoon candy reward. <laughs> but I wouldn't have, I mean, that's just silly. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do they think I'm going to stay inside on a perfect day, gunning for a virtual sugar rush? <laughs> Okay, 14, 14 games is enough. <laughs> Back to my original purpose, the weather. <clears throat> I'm just going to check my email real quick. Oh, nothing worth looking at. Just cutesy forwarded junk. Kitties and doggies doing precious things. So twee, I don't even open them. <laughs> oh, but this one. <laughs> This is a commercial for a product called Poo Puri. <laughs> Whoa, it is really funny. There's this woman in a flouncy dress, and she's sitting on a toilet, and she's talking about stinking stuff. <laughs> I have got to forward this to like nine of my close personal friends. This is almost as funny as the cleavage caddy. <laughs> but on to the weather. Wait. I always ignore pop-up ads, but this one is for a dog muzzle that makes your pup look like a duck. <laughs> now really, it's hilarious. A beak on a dog? <laughs> All right, the weather. <laughs> Beaver secretions in food? No way. I, I never get drawn into those news items that come up when you sign out of email, but Finding out that the anal mucus of a beaver tastes like vanilla and is regularly put into food under the label natural flavoring is really informative. It'll just take a second to Google all the pudding, ice cream, candy, chewing gum I've ever eaten to see if uh, natural flavoring is an ingredient. And then another 10, 15 minutes to gag, puke, and brush my teeth. Okay. Ah, finally moving on. The weather looks good. I did actually sign out of my email, right? I didn't just close out without signing out. Because I've heard if you don't sign out, some deranged hacker can harvest your cookies and, and clone your brain and, and suction out your entire bank account and mail merge with Al-Qaeda and spot the toe fungus in your medical records and put on Facebook that you watched the Poo-Pourri commercial five times. I, I better go back in and make sure I signed out. Oh, check this out. <laughs> a way to keep your gutters clean with a slinky. <laughs> oh. And the trailer for Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs too. <laughs> Pause to put that on Netflix. Oh, look. <laughs> October beauty products. The corkscrew texture of my hair leaves the outer cuticles open. I don't know if I should be riding a bike with open cuticles and outdated September face cream. I mean, it, it's getting dark anyway. Are scrunchies really making a comeback? Maybe tomorrow. I wonder what the weather will be. Boy, I'm so glad I didn't have to sit around waiting for a weather report on the radio. That would take all day. <laughs> Did you ever play a game called Trivial Pursuit? Well, I am really bad at Trivial Pursuit, but whenever I play and inevitably lose, I always try to soften the blow by saying, well, maybe I'm only good at lofty pursuits. But lately, I feel like I've, I've begun to fall behind on my lofty pursuits. I start out to do something grand, but there's just so many little megabytes of information to stumble over along the way. I, I think about the great navigator, Odysseus, who went up against the sirens and the cyclops and a cannibal or two, but could he have withstood the lure of the Google piñata? I mean, he might have gotten stranded on Netflix Island, 
never to be heard from again, or eaten alive by funny little YouTube hijinks until he hurled himself into the Aegean Sea. When did becoming distracted become so popular? I mean, it's almost trendy now to ignore what is living and breathing around you. My husband and I went out to dinner recently and we have another couple. He drove and uh, he went to park the car. We went into the restaurant, we're having a lovely conversation with these people and my cell phone goes off. Excuse me. Oh, they have to stop at in it so I can take the call. It's him, it's my husband. He's calling to tell me that he's parked the car and he'll be in it a jiffy. <laughs> now in the days before cell phones, I'd have to wait a full 30 seconds for that scoop. But my cell phone, my cell phone implies that I am sought after, that I have friends, family, coworkers who need my input 24 seven. I'm entirely too hip to just walk down the street. God forbid somebody should see me just walking down the street. Who is that lonely person walking down the street? Don't they have anybody to talk to on a cell phone? You know, sometimes I'm not even having a conversation. I'm just faking it. <laughs> so I won't look like some goober non-starter with time on her hands. And sometimes I am having a conversation, but I'm saying something like, oh, hi, honey. <laughs> I'm walking down the street. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, the light, uh, it's red. <laughs> I, I can't hear you. There's so many horns honking. <laughs> uh, look, I'm almost across. I I'll let you know when I get to the curb. Love you. I mean, I'm really glad I don't have to drag myself over to where a phone is tethered to a plug to communicate, but what am I saying? And now with social media, I can update hundreds of acquaintances hundreds of times a day on my progress, complete with visuals, but does doing so impede my progress? Am I living or am I posting? We have a friend who posts personal information on Facebook 15 to 20 times a day. She takes a picture of every meal she makes and puts it on Facebook. That makes me feel really old and behind the times. You know, and then, and then there's journalism. Journalism, which I used to really love and once considered as a career choice, is now as outdated as pants without holes. I mean, who wants to read some boring, all researched up story about a tornado in Oklahoma when you can get a live update from Tiffy, who says, oh, there's like wind all over and stuff is totally flying around, especially stuff that doesn't weigh much. <gasps> OMG, a flip flop just hit the window. Do I look hot in these rain boots? How about now? Why should I travel to Brazil? I can take a virtual tour on my computer. Why should I learn a foreign language? I have the translator app. Why should I try to find myself? There's lots of data out there to define me. Why should I learn to read a compass or a map? I'll GPS myself a direction in life. But do the technological advances designed to save us time actually generate irresistible trivial pursuits for us to do with that time? Am I building, changing, solving, improving, making spirits soar? Or am I just hoping to go viral? Am I sucking the marrow out of life or am I recording it on my flip camera? I just wanted to wind down with a quotation from somebody who never once tweeted or texted, but definitely made time in his day for lofty pursuits. He said, when to the sessions of sweet, silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past, I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes, new wail my dear time's waste. Now, if old Bill Shakespeare fretted that he'd wasted too much time, God help the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs>